AI. In this video, we'll do a quick demonstration of connecting an ASA service graph between two EPGs within the ACI. So we'll do a manage mode uh, configuration of the ASA and we'll connect the ASA between EPG1 and EPG2. Um, and this is the topology I'm gonna, uh, gonna use for this demonstration. So I have a EPG1, uh, which will be in the IP address in the range of 6.6.0 um, and I have another EPG2, which is in the range of 7.7.x. And I will actually be inserting a firewall, which is the ASAV and will be completely managed and configured from the EPIC. So I have an ASAV already deployed and this is the ASAV that is already deployed. So let's quickly go and check in terms of what's the existing configuration on the ASAV. Let's use the ASTM launcher. So the only configurations that's available on the ASAV now is just the management configurations to access the uh, firewall itself. So let's quickly do that. So this is the ASAV. Let's quickly go to the configurations tab and check the interfaces. And you can see that only the management interface has a configuration of the IP address and there's no other configurations on any other interfaces. Similar if you go to the firewall rules, there are absolutely no rules configured for that firewall itself. Let's have a look at the VM itself, so ASAV, this is the ASAV VM. Let's go to the virtual machine settings. As you can see, the first network adapter is basically the management network adapter and that's configured for VM network and all of the network adapters are actually configured for quarantine. So when we do the configuration and stitch the uh, ASAV as a service graph between the two EPGs, these configurations will be automatically pushed from the APIC into this ASAV. So let's quickly jump onto our ACI dashboard. Let's go to a tenant. and go to our ASA tenant. So I'll be using an ASA tenant and I'll be defining the two EPGs. So let me just quickly show you this ASA tenant. And within the ASA tenant, I have uh, ASA profile. And this profile has two EPGs. And those two EPGs have no contract between them. If you look at the BD configurations, uh, it has two BDs. EPG1 corresponds to BD1 and EPG2 corresponds to BD2. And they are part of the subnet. 6.6.0 which is part of the EPG1 and BD2 is part of 7.7 subnet. Now this is already done and I have these two EPGs already configured and connected to the VMware domain and I have already connected two of my machines which is the tiny VM1. Uh, as you can see this is connected to the EPG1 and the tiny VM2 is connected to EPG2. Uh, since there was no contract existing, let me show it to you again, there was no contract between the two EPGs, uh, these two uh, workloads will not be able to ping each other. So let's quickly check that out. So this is my VM1 which is part of EPG1 and it has an IP of in the range of 6.6.11. So let me quickly check if I'm able to ping the gateway, not the gateway, it's basically the BDIP address. Okay, so it's able to ping. Uh, the gateway is given as 6.6.25 and that would be the IP address that I will assign to the ASA firewall and that would be the gateway to reach the other EPG. But if I try to ping the other EPG, so let me just check, so the other workload and this is the other workload that we have which is having a 7.7.11 and this also is able to ping the gateway, uh, not the gateway, the BDIP address but it won't be able to ping the other one. This is not able to ping and similarly this will not be able to ping the workload on the other EPG. So what we're going to do is basically 
create a surface graph and insert a firewall between these two surface graph and allow the communication between these two EBGs. So let's quickly do that. So the first thing that we need to do, so let me just stop the thing. The first thing that we need to do is to basically go to the L4L functions and create an L4L7 device. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is in a managed mode, so I'll just call it ASA firewall. And this is what firewall. So virtual is another firewall. The domain is AVS. DVS. This is a single node. You can also create an HIO cluster mode. This is the device package. And I've already loaded the device package into the ACI, and those can be done on the L4L7 tab. The model is VASAV. And I'm going to connect to the SAV from the epic on the outer band. And this is the password I'm going to use. The management IP is D.165. This is the SAV2 is my VM. I'm going to add interfaces. So, gigabit 0 slash 0 is part of. Network adapter 2. Remember, network adapter 1 is the management network, and 0, 1 should be network adapter 3. Let's create the cluster interfaces as well. I'll call it consumer. Consumer will be outside and should be 0 slash 0. And I'll call a provider. I'll just name it inside So it just doesn't show me the drop down. Okay, it showed me the drop down now. So I'll put gigabit zero slash one. I'm sorry, this should be gigabit zero slash zero. Let me just recreate that again just a second. So fun is consumer, which will be outside. Consumer outside and it should be zero slash zero. And then you have provider which will be inside and it should be zero slash one. Yes. Okay. And then do a next. I won't define any configurations here, I'll just do a finish. And that's it. The SA firewall has been added to it. Let's quickly check the status of the TSA firewall and the device state should show as stable. So it's showing as stable, so the connection between the APIC and the ACV is, is good. So let's go back to our application profile and just try to add a contract between the two EPGs. So let's track the contract. EPG2 is our provider, this is a consumer. Let's drop. So EPG1 is the consumer, EPG2 is the provider. Let me create a contract of all traffic. I will not put any filter in the contracts, but I will add a L4L sun service graph. And I'll do next. Once I do that, I should get this and I will create call this ASA firewall graph name and I'll drag and drop this firewall here. Just rename it as ASAV and it's routed mode. It pre-populates the BDE and the interfaces. And I'll choose a predefined template, which is basically a web policy for outer mode. What it does, it basically already provides um, access lists for HTTP and HTTPS. So, 
So let's go ahead and click next. And this is where you need to start configuring your ASA parameters from within the APIC itself. So there are certain things that we need to do. Uh, the first one being the access list. So we chose the web profile and you can see the web profile already includes permit statements for HTTP and HTTPS. So what we'll do is go ahead and add a permit IP statement. Just update. And once you do an update, you'll see that the red mark is here. So it means we need to add further information to it. So we'll go down and do an action as permit. And we'll just create an order, or it can be anything. We'll just put it as 10. It's the order of the access list. So let's add the order. So this is all green now. The second thing that we need to do is to do the interface related configuration. The first one is the external interface. We'll go to the interface specific configuration and we'll add the IP address configuration for this interface. So this is an external interface, which is basically a consumer interface, which will be 6 25 24. Just update it. And that's all, it's done. We just go back to our second interface related configuration, which is for internal interface, and do the same thing. We add our IP address. Seven dot twenty-five And that's it. Most of the configurations uh, we don't we don't want to do any NAT configurations. And if you have any NAT configurations and network config configurations, you can do those. But it's not required for a demo now. And that's all you need to do. And let's go ahead and do okay. Now once you do okay and submit it, you'll find that the APIC actually starts pushing configurations into the ASAB. So let's do okay. This is what it is, the contract, and let's do a submit. And once you do a submit, let's go ahead and quickly check. The ASDM is now telling you that there is a configuration out of sync and there is some configuration has been pushed. And similarly, if you look at our vCenter, you'll find that there are two additional port groups that I got created and the ASAV virtual machine is getting reconfigured. So let's give it a minute or so. Uh, so that's what it is and if you quickly jump onto our ASAV to virtual machine and just click this and you will find that the network adapter 2 and network adapter 3 which are part of the quarantine network group has now been changed to a sort of a, a particular port group which is used to stitch the traffic between the two EPGs via the firewall. So this is automatically being pushed from the APIC itself. Uh, so this was on the vCenter. Let's go ahead and check our ASDM. Let's do a refresh. And let's check our interfaces first. So let's go to interfaces. And as you can see, earlier we had just the management interface configuration. Now we have the two interfaces configured, the gigabit 0 slash 0, which is now having an IP of 6.6.25. And similarly, gigabit 01, which is having the 7.7.25, which is the internal interface. And we'll go ahead and look at the firewall configurations. As you can see, we had the HTTP, HTTPS, and we have the permit IP configurations being pushed from the APIC itself. To, <coughs> to the ASA firewall. So let's quickly go back to our VMs. This is the VM1. Let's see if we are able to ping our firewall interface. And yes, we are able to ping our firewall interface. And let's quickly check if we are able to ping our workload on the other EPG. And that's it, we are able to ping to the other EPG. And to quickly check that that's it's working, so let's go ahead and log into our SAV2 on the console and run debug on ICMP. So we'll do a debug on ICMP twice and we'll start the ping again. And let's go back to our SAV and you will find that indeed the packet is actually flowing to the firewall. Let's quickly go and stop this. And that's it. So the entire firewall configuration has been completed through the APIC itself. So we didn't have to actually configure the firewall on its own. 
the firewall was just given a management IP and all the configurations have been done uh, through the APK itself and that's how manage mode with the device package works uh, with ACI. Uh, that's that ends the demo. Uh, thanks for watching.